Hey there, welcome back into the Reno You Know. I'm your host, Steve, and I've been a lifelong musician and music fan. And I thought for this episode, it might be fun to look at some uh, uh, old venues that used to host rock shows and concerts and no longer do. Uh, Rock and roll haunts, if you will. Uh, You might be surprised at some of the names of the acts that used to come through town into some of these built now unassuming buildings. And if we didn't look at this, you and might not know that uh, uh, these used to be uh, uh, rock and roll venues. So, and I, I really wish I didn't have to do this alone. I, it would be so cool to have, a, I guess, a rock and roll authority that's been in town for years and have, has been in the business for years and could lend some interesting perspectives. Let me give someone a call. Hey, my man, how are you doing? Good, good, good to hear your voice. Hey, I've got an idea for an episode on uh, my YouTube channel, The Reno You Know, uh, Rock and Roll Haunts. It would be uh, buildings that uh, used to host rock shows and concerts and, uh, and no longer do. Uh, would you like to, like to take a trip down memory lane and, and hang out for a bit? All right. Hey, Steve. What's going Fix, on, Fix, what's man? going on? How you been? I'm good, man. How are you? I haven't seen you in a mil- million years. You gotta get plugged in here. Uh, yeah, no worries. And the Jeep. Woohoo! Yeah. yeah, I was thinking on the drive over here, our paths tend to cross every 10 to 15 years. No, more often more, than more, that. More than often? <laughs> more often than that. And, uh, geez, you know, all the band years. Oh my gosh. Of course, I still have a band. Good on you. Uh-huh. I, I kind I kind of do in a nebulous form. Yeah, but you always got a great set list. Yeah, know? yeah. Let's go up to Gro- Gro- Grove Street. This is like yeah. the epicenter of all things. There's a uh, interesting hi- history with this building we're going to go to. Yeah, I'm uh, super which is excited. now a metropon. I was in there the other day. I, I bought a, a CD player cassette deck boombox. Okay, so there it is. The metro. On. Yes, it now, is. Now, this building here, this originally in the 60s was built as the first Safeway. This was the first what? Safeway, yes. And uh, when uh, when I was working here as the nightclub, uh, when it was a nightclub, I uh, if you blew a fuse on stage, it was under frozen foods in the in the back panel, <laughs> you know. And it had the big roll-up door here, right? Big roll-up door. Oh yeah. Um, and upstairs was the office. The build was kind of interesting because they had the bathrooms and the, and the upstairs office. And we used to have so many great shows here. I mean, all all kinds of great shows that we did here. And the thing about this is, it was original Safeway. Then it became Consumer Building Supply. Consumer Builder Supply, 50 East Grove. Okay, and see, it, it had all the windows where it, it, it was, you know, when it was a market. Right, okay. Um, so it became consumer building supplies. It was like the first kind of Home Depot store here in Reno. <laughs> and the big sign was changed over from Safeway to CBS. Did they finally take the, yeah, they took the big sign down. But it said CBS. So they changed it uh, in the in the mid-70s. It became CBS Dance Floor, the largest disco on the west coast <laughs> and they had many great years al Sauters was the owner of many great years as a disco and when um i came into the building it was uh cbs still and new money came in a guy came in from sacramento jim haps and he bought it wanted to turn it into a rock club so we uh tore up the John Travolta dance floor. Ooh. And, and this was sold to Star Sound Audio, which became the Grand Ballroom. Star Sound owned this? Star Sound Audio owned this. It was the Grand Ballroom. Lee Taggart was the owner. And um, I had been the DJ here for a long time, but I had just gotten a job at KOZZ. And one time it was brought up to me, how do we dance to Rush? <laughs> You is that possible? Just do You're right. you just do? <laughs> okay, so right. we're here uh, behind the building. It was it was Safeway, it was Consumer Building Supply, and it became CBS Dance Floor, and then it was the Rock Shop. The Rock Shop. Then uh, was when I came to work here, and then it became 
the Grand Ballroom. Yeah. Now, many, many great shows, whether it was the Rock Shop or the Grand Ballroom, uh, this is the roll-up door, which originally, you know, was this receiving right. for Safeway, and the door would roll up, and you'd unload your truck, and you'd, you'd, you'd bring all the stuff in. Um, and that worked great for when we had load in for a band. Sure. You know, uh, whether it was a Doors tribute band or Rob Hanna and Foolish, Foolish Behavior, which is a Rod Stewart tribute, or some of the events, Quiet Riot, Y&T, Pat Travers, Blue Oyster Cult, uh, a couple of Doobie Brothers offshoot bands, Tom Johnston's band, huh. and also Tyran Porter's band. There was just so many great shows. That how, what did shows did you see here? I saw, I saw several, but the most memorable show that I saw at the Grand Ballroom, and I remember it like it was yesterday, Pantera. I saw yeah. the mighty Pantera in, in this little brick building, and uh, uh, they were young, they were on fire, fire man it was probably their first or their second album cycle yeah and uh, uh i got a proper skull crushing that night it was yeah. Yeah. i still remember that i also saw i saw the knack here i saw joan jett and the i Black. saw the knack did here you see, did you see the knack joan the jett and the blackhearts yeah. were here i was they, right in the front for joan well jett. for security reasons uh when it was the rock shop and i was i be, had become the manager of the rock shop I would bring my El Camino in here and park it, then I'd sleep upstairs. Now the office upstairs, uh, nice little office upstairs, had a shower, had a big conference area, and above the desk, in the cupboards, was a bed <laughs> with, with mirrors on the top and shag carpeting. And it was like, this is like, it was like Narnia. You know, you, you climb up, you had a little step ladder thing and open up the doors and you'd sleep upstairs above the desk in this cabinet would open up and it was like a bedroom. <laughs> and I can remember one time hearing something, waking up, seeing myself and I'd go, whoa. Oh. <laughs> but that's what I would do when we had a lot of equipment here. And, you know, I kind of had to stay with the building, but I parked my El Camino right in here. How cool is that? Yeah, yeah. Some great shows. and. Jeez, some great times. So there was another club right over there, so people would leave here and go there, or they'd go across the street to Bishop's, and uh, this was uh, 50 East Grove was the epicenter of all kinds of things. Absolutely. Now, <clears throat> this building has a lot of ghosts. Disco ghosts. Disco ghosts. Yeah, <laughs> imagine back. Now, now when, when I came in as DJ, and did all this uh, work with hanging the, the giant GBL speakers and, and using all the equipment, you know, cannibalizing everything to make it into a rock club. Um, <laughs> there was like probably uh, 2,000 disco records, some of them colored vinyl, uh, some of them 12 inch sing singles. And the uh, new owner said, take these disco records go down to Recycle Records and get me some rock records because I had my collection, but there was other things we needed. Yeah. There was new songs and things, and I want to get some store credit. So I loaded up all of the disco records in my El Camino. <laughs> I went down to Recycle Records. Paul went through all of them and bought four. <laughs> 2,000 records. It just was, yeah, he what bought What does that four. tell you about disco? <laughs> so, well, at this point in time, the bottom had fell out of disco, okay? <clears throat> so I took them all, and still in the truck, I took them all to the swap meet the next day. I sold about 50 of them. Yeah. <laughs> which gave me enough money to buy, like, you know, the new Foreigner and the new Tubes record and the new Van Halen, whatever we needed for the dance floor. Yeah. And <clears throat> leaving <laughs> leaving the, uh, the swap meet at the El Rancho drive-in, <laughs> All the records still in the back of my El Camino. I'm flying down Interstate 80 because, well, I was going to go to the dump. <laughs> and I'm flying along and one record, two records. They just kept flying out of the back of the truck just one at a time. It was just like it was raining disco three, three. records <laughs> on Interstate 80. I just kept on driving. Pretty Problem soon. solved. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I was going to tell you, I came in and did some recon in this building a couple a couple of days ago uh, and I went into the manager and I said hey you know I'm going to do this this piece on the, on the previous use of this building and I was just curious is the old stage still there is the old bar still there and they said oh yeah 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 they're still there in the back room 
And of course I had to ask, can I see those? And she said, no, no. <laughs> No. And then she got the... Yeah, then, that's the answer I got. Yeah, and then, then she, she called up the district managers. Sorry, we're just not, not allowed. So your pawn shops being what they are. Oh, I, no, when they, they yeah. pulled out the insurance card, liability, uh, liability and all this yeah. other stuff. And yeah. But it'd be cool to see. Just, it's kind of cool to know that, that that structure is still inside this well, building. Now, they told me that it, it was uh, the... the it's, oh, that's all gone. I go, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure the John Travolta dance floor is still up in the attic intact <laughs> where I put it away. And yes, the, the main uh, power box, it still probably says frozen foods and produce section. And, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. Safeway, that's awesome. Safeway, Consumer Building Supply, CBS, CBS dance floor, the rock shop, the grand ballroom. Right. And now uh, the Grand Ballroom, they put in all brand new carpet. It was so nice. It made it really nice. And of course, it only took a year for us people in Reno to soak it in beer and oh, yeah. give it that club smell. You open up the club <laughs> about four in the afternoon, Whoosh. like, whoo! <laughs> I know yeah. what happened here last night. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome. Let's, uh, let's be you know, about... You know, here's the thing. Oh, oh, sure. Go ahead. You're a single guy. You're a single girl. You're looking for some action. You know what it happens? Saturday night between 11 and 2 a.m. So if you're sitting home going, oh man, I won't get laid, I won't meet somebody, I won't get some action. Well, it only happens Saturday night between 11 and 2 a.m. That's when it happens. Window. I've watched it happen. <laughs> I have watched it happen. That is when it happens. So folks, want to get lucky? 11 to 2 a.m. Saturday, night. three hours out of the week. That's your window right there. <laughs> you heard it here first or second or third. All right. Cool, let's move on to our next venue, which is uh, uh, Del, well, I'm not gonna say. Let's go, uh, let's head to Midtown and check it out. All right, here we are on the corner of South Virginia and St. Lawrence, and this old brick building behind us is one of the most venerable uh, and mem memorable well, there's, rock there's clubs Well, there's a arena. plaque on the side of the wall there. Did you notice that? Yeah, it's brand Historical new. place. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This was- And now this um, Midtown still had a lot of uh, residences, but had a lot of businesses, whether it was a glass company, a business machine company, um, uh, radio repair, whatever, TV repair. A lot of, it was the, the, this in Wells Avenue was the epicenter of a lot of commerce and a lot of old family businesses that built Reno. If you want to get your hot water heater repaired, some plumbing done, fix your TV, uh, did some dry cleaning. This was, and then what happened was as time moved on, people moved to the outer areas. And as it, we keep growing, I mean, people are moving outside of McCarran. But uh, this building, a uh, very historical, it's now the St. Lawrence Commons. Uh, and we're here in Midtown, which is kind of uh, Disneyland for millennials. Yeah, it is. <laughs> now here, the, the Shea family, Jerry Shea was a Reno uh, Police Department motorcycle traffic cop. Huh. At one point in time, uh, he saw an opportunity to buy this entire building the whole from block? Shays, the oh. whole, basically the whole block down to that house. Okay. This whole brick building, he bought all of it. And this is at a time when everybody was leaving, leaving huh? the, uh, the, 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 what is now Midtown, the South Virginia Wells area. A lot of people are leaving to go to bigger places. Sure. <clears throat> And uh, he bought the whole building for a song, and they opened up the very first Del Mar Station, which was a corner bar right here, this one corner. Yeah. It was a nice little bar, Del Mar Station, and that's how it started. And then one day they expanded, made it a little bit bigger, got in some, some music, a little tiny stage. Oh, yeah. Then one day they made it a little bit bigger, and then a little bit bigger. Pretty soon they had a 800 seat concert hall. Oh, yeah. And some of the great bands that played here, everybody from Dream Theater to Queensryche and Great White, Queensryche LA Guns. Here? Yes, they did. Wow. Yes, they did. Yeah, I, I saw Cheap Trick mm -hmm. in this building. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I remember no, a... no FX I saw here, my favorite punk yeah. band of all time. I saw yeah. No FX here. Yeah. Uh, Dream Theater, I was. I saw the Dream Theater show. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, um, we had uh, a Lodo show with no doubt, but that was at the uh, 
was at the Spice House, ah, yes. which is the Ice House, which became the Spice House. But we were going to do the show here. We did a lot of alternative shows here, a lot of rock shows here. Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, L.A. Guns, a lot of metal bands. Great White was a great night. I mean, there were just so many great bands that came to and played here because the stage was big. Yeah. And uh, plus they had a back area where you had pool tables. Jimmy Page. Uh, when Jimmy Page came to town, and he was making a record with David Coverdale, my dear friend David Coverdale, who's been always been so generous and so kind and has always included me in so many of his projects. Uh, David and Jimmy Page, Jimmy Page comes to town and they want to make a record together, but Jimmy got bored sitting up in, at the house in Incline Village. Uh -huh. But Jimmy loved Elmar Station. And I'd be sitting in a booth while some band was playing with Jimmy and people would come by, they were very polite, they'd wait, they'd come, they'd bring skulls to get autographs, they'd bring albums. Skulls. And um, <laughs> I'd be sitting next to Jimmy Page and say, Max, see the blonde over there with the big boobs? She's the one that wants to meet Jimmy Page. <laughs> She's now, the one. Now go fetch her. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Jimmy Page, and all night long, Jimmy Page had that same $100 bill, and he never paid, never ever paid, because how do you charge the guy who wrote all the great songs of your misspent youth? He, he developed alligator arms. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He'd pull out that 100 and then, now oh, Jimmy, listen, I, I got you. Let me get that for you. Yeah, so, so you you came up from Southern California, yeah, right? Yeah. How long have you been in Reno? Uh, since uh, I graduated high school, I've been here. My parents moved here. My dad retired. My parents moved here, and it took me a while, but I found them. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and how long yeah. have you been on the air here? 42 years. Jeez Louise, that's awesome. All right, this is... Lawler Event Center at the University of Nevada Reno campus. It's the largest arena in northern Nevada, 12,000 seats, and it broke ground in 1981. It opened November 4th, 1983. In the fall of 83, the very first concert was the Stray Cats opening act, Roman Holiday. Really? Now, there was a country act that played before, but we're talking rock here, okay? So, yeah, there we go, the Lawler events, and everybody played here, from Garth Brooks to the Scorpions and Genesis and so many great acts. Um, this was the go-to place for a major It was major all show. shows, yeah. and it was built well because you had, uh, um, it was just, it was built for concerts and sporting events and had just uh, so many facets and aspects to it that worked really well for all these, all these shows. And, Show after show after show, I'd be down here doing interviews or whatever. The second rock show was the Scorpions and Bon Jovi. After interviewing the Scorpions and Bon Jovi, John Bon Jovi went out on stage and said, Good evening, Las Vegas! And promptly got pelted with beer bottles. Yeah. Back when they served bottles. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, and they changed it all to draft. And uh, uh, But, yeah, so many shows here. So many oh, man. great shows. I saw, I saw the Van Halen. Van Halen shows at least twice here, yeah. uh, both with Sammy Hagar. Yeah. But my favorite, my favorite show that I ever saw here was Genesis like, was good. Genesis was good. Oh. I didn't see that one, but 1989, Metallica at the top of their, oh yeah, top of their game. Oh, in the round. Yeah, yeah. With to, the flames. To, actually, this was I think might have been before the round because they had the big justice oh for the snake all. pit that was a snake pit yeah i believe so yeah. that was the snake pit one the Big justice for all statue <clears throat> right that was and, a snake pit dude this this was 10 days before i got married in, in yeah. 1989 metallic and, played here four times yeah at, le at least um, e eagles eagles played I, here i've got a, a funny story when the eagles played here a buddy of mine a photographer buddy of mine somehow got the gig to do the passport photos of the Eagles yeah. because they were going to, you know, the next leg of their tour was in Europe or, or yeah. wherever it was. So we set up, up in one of the rooms up there and uh, in walks Don Henley and Glenn Fry and Timothy B. Schmidt and Joe Walsh. We got to do yeah. their passport photo photographs. Yeah. And somewhere I have a copy of that. I don't think it's, it's appropriate to put it up on YouTube. But uh, that's, if I have a claim to fame, I helped do the passport photographs of the Eagles. <laughs> but I think... Uh... One of note, Jeff Beck played here on his first tour with Rod Stewart. It was Rod Stewart featuring Jeff Beck, and uh, they had both played on each other's records, and it was the first and only night on the tour because Jeff and Rod got into it. Just, I know, so we were standing outside waiting, and we heard all the, the commotion, and yeah, they, they, I don't know if they had a fist fight. 
no. But there was there was yelling. There was uh, Jeff came out and he was very kind and visited with all of us. And Rod came out a little bit later and oh everything's fine. But it was the first and only night that Jeff Beck played with Rod Stewart on that tour. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. I appreciate you coming out, hanging out with me, Max. And uh, uh, there might be some other smaller venues that, that I'll visit in the next couple of days. It'll be volume two. This is Red's Little Waldorf Saloon, or as locals like to call it, the Little Wall. And this is just a short walk up the street from Lawler Event Center. The Waldorf itself was an establishment that was in downtown Reno. And I believe the story goes that the Waldorf either moved up here by the university or they op opened a Little Waldorf, a, a smaller satellite version. Back in the day, the Little Waldorf hosted uh, uh, several shows for bands that uh, would soon become big names. I personally saw Nickelback here uh, when they were touring on their, must have been their first album. It was a small show, really intimate. Nobody really knew who they were, but I saw them here. It was really cool. Uh, the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones played here in what must have been a really rowdy show. Vince Neil's band, Vince Neil from Motley Crue when he was doing a solo tour, played here. And also the Black Crows played here at the Little Waldorf. How appropriate, thank you, Crows. All right, this big old building at the corner of First and Sierra now houses the Liberty Food and Wine Exchange on the ground floor. But back in the day, this building was the J.C. Penney building back when we had department stores in downtown Reno. And they're, they've got First Street all torn up today. Hopefully, hopefully it's not too loud with all the construction. It looks like we're getting some new sidewalks. Um, Anyway, I want to show you something cool. Let me flip around here. Uh, that little door under the F of the Fulton Alley sign uh, was the entrance to the Fallout Shelter Club. And the Fallout Shelter operated for many years and had a lot of local bands there. But I remember coming down one night and I saw Typo Negative in that little basement of the old J.C. Penney building. And I don't know why it closed, but I'm willing to wager it had something to do with code because I think that was the only entrance in and out of that basement, is that one door. Alrighty, this is the Reno Livestock Event Center on the grounds where they hold the Reno Rodeo every year. And they really don't have bands here at the Livestock Event Center anymore. Uh, and it was kind of weird because it had a dirt floor. Uh, but way back many years ago, I saw the Red Hot Chili Peppers in this building. And listen to some of the other names that have played here at the Event Center, the Livestock Event Center. Uh, Foo Fighters, uh, Slayer, The Deftones, Tool, and Blink-182. Here on Center Street in downtown is the National Bowling Stadium. And uh, this facility hosts bowling championship thingamajigs throughout the year. And it was also the location of uh, several scenes of the movie Kingpin with uh, Bill Murray. And in the late 1990s, I am not making this up, Megadeth. Megadeth played the ground floor here at the National Bowling Stadium, and I know because I was here. All right, this is the theater on Keystone Avenue in the Save Mart Shopping Center. And uh, truth be known, I forgot about this location and haven't. it kind of fell off my radar for many, many years until just a couple of days ago. Uh, back in the day, this, this uh, uh, location was a movie theater, and I believe it was called the Keystone Cinemas. I don't recall ever going to a movie here. Um, and then, at some point, it turned into a rock venue, and they had concerts here, and some pretty big ones, you know, big names. And then it fell off my radar, and apparently the Truckee Meadows Community College took over this facility and kind of remodeled, revamped it into some kind of performing arts uh, uh, facility. And uh, then it fell, fell off my radar again until just a couple of days ago I swung by because I remember I saw a really cool show here once just to see if anything was going on. And apparently there is. This is called the theater. And I uh, called the phone number that was in the, in, the, in the window, and a guy named Kevin answered. I explained who I was and what I was doing. He says, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be right down. And he, he came down and he gave me a full tour of the facility. Apparently Kevin and his uh, partner in magic uh, uh, are putting on a 
full-on great magic show here. Uh, they were uh, uh, performers in Las Vegas and on cruise ships for years, and then COVID hit. And uh, a while ago, they, they saw this opportunity to uh, lease or, or at least perform in this theater and uh, uh, put on their magic performance on their own terms. I, I just love that. And he, he said, hey, you want to come see our, our show tomorrow? I said, yeah, sure. I didn't know what to expect. So I brought the wife down, and uh, uh, we saw a Sunday matinee. And I'm telling you, if you're a local, you've got to come see this world-class performance. The, the magic is top-notch. I still don't know how they do most of that. And they have showgirls. So you got to come see the showgirls and the magic down here at the theater. I think they have performances every weekend. Uh, you can check their website at wethetheater.com. I hope I got that right, wethetheater.com. Uh, but anyway, back in 1995, I saw Dawkin here at this theater. It was called Easy Street back then. The, the club was called Easy Street. And I saw Dawkin, I think it was 1995, with George Lynch. And listen to some of the other names that played in this, in this room. A uh, Corn played here, The Black Crows, Collective Soul, uh, Fight, which was uh, Rob Halford from Judas Priest's uh, solo band at one point, and Johnny Winter, and many others. So uh, it's great to see this old venue being repurposed and reused. It's a really cool room. Come check it out. The building behind me on First Street uh, started life as the Money Tree Casino, which was operated by the Mapes Hotel Casino. And in later years, it was uh, Eddie's Fabulous 50s. And uh, since then, it's been a, a string of nightclubs and such. But back in the late 1990s, I remember seeing Anthrax in the basement of this building. And I was a big, big fan. And after the show, th yeah, this was the late 1990s. After the show, I wanted to maybe meet the band because it was a real small venue and such so uh, I waited around the entrance inside and they never came they never came then I finally came out they had come out that little door behind me that little wooden door and their bus was up here and other people were congregating around and glad handing and shaking hands I missed out on it but uh, I got I actually did uh, uh, get to, to shake the guitar player's hand and uh, as he was walking away so all was not lost and also, uh, around that time, I saw Seven Dust and Papa Roach in the ground floor here. When the weather's nice, Reno is a great place to see outdoor entertainment. And right now I'm going to show you the old location of what was the Reno Hilton Amphitheater. And uh, that used to exist where, uh, uh, of course, where the GSR, the Grand Sierra Resort, is now. Uh, the Hilton le kind of leased out this parking lot behind the property to uh, a promoter, and there was a semi-permanent stage here for many years. And uh, I think what happened was that uh, the folks that uh, bought the building, uh, making it the GSR, uh, said, I don't think we're going to do this anymore. So uh, the promoter uh, packed up and left. Uh, but before they left, uh, they uh, uh, left quite a list of wonderful entertainers that played in, in this parking lot. And I'll, I'll start with a quick story of what my wife related. She went to see Sting here uh, one summer, and I wasn't a big enough Sting fan, so I didn't join her, so she, she took some girlfriends. Uh, but I guess uh, during that show, uh, uh, Robin Williams and Billy Crystal popped on the stage because they were in town to, to film a, a movie of some sort. So that, that had to be pretty cool to see. Uh, I saw Judas Priest in this parking lot. I saw Queensryche in this parking lot. Uh, James Brown played here. Uh, Alice Cooper, the Beach Boys played out here. Uh, Billy Idol, ZZ Top, Journey. Behind me on Spokane Street, just off 4th Street between Reno and Sparks, is the Spice House, which is a topless bar. But back in the day, this building was known as the Ice House, and it, that was a concert venue that got its name from the fact that this old building was, in fact, an ice house uh, located on the old railroad tracks behind it. And one of my bands, I'm going to guess in 1986, played here. Uh, gosh, almost 30 years ago, and one of the songs was recorded by a local cable access uh, television show called Rubber Bandits. And if I'm able to put my hands on that footage, if I can uh, dig it out, unearth it, uh, I'll put up a little bit of it uh, here on this video, uh, just so you can see what uh, it looked like inside there. 
Uh, but back to musical acts that actually made something of themselves musically <laughs> once they played here. Green Day played here. Uh, now, keep in mind, this was you know 30 years ago when they were just starting out, but, but Green Day played here. No Doubt with Gwen Stefani, they played here. Uh, uh, Pennywise played here. The Offspring. Uh, Firehose, which was uh, Mike Watts' post Minutemen project. I, I got to see them here. And many other bands as well. But uh, concerts are no longer here, just other alternative forms of entertainment. All right, this is the Reno Sparks Convention Center on South Virginia Street. And before Lawler Events Center opened in 1983, uh, this was the place to see a, a major big name rock acts as they came through town in the 1970s up through the early 1980s. And this, uh, th this location got its uh, start in life as the Centennial Coliseum, which was uh, opened in 1965, and it was named for the, the centennial of uh, uh, the Nevada's statehood. Nevada became a state in 1864. And a whole bunch of uh, notable acts came through this location. And I have my list. And of course, the, the, the main number one uh, act that played here, uh, in my opinion, was Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley play, played Reno only one time in November of 1976 and he played it here. I actually did a whole episode on Elvis Presley in Northern Nevada. I'll leave a link to that in the description. And besides Elvis, other acts that, that came through here, Ozzy Osbourne, Ted Nugent, Black Sabbath, Def Leppard in their early days, Sammy Hagar, Rush, Van Halen, Tom Petty, uh, uh, Jay Giles, Journey, The Kinks, and even Sonny and Cher. All right, we're gonna finish this one up here at the Little Wall, uh, Red's Little Waldorf Saloon, which is a, a kind of a legendary college hang uh, here near uh, the University of Nevada, Reno. There's a lot, of, a lot of funky stuff on the ceilings and on the walls. The, the decor is pretty, pretty wonderful and unique and almost one of a kind. And today I'm enjoying a Scheinerbach, which is a fine German style, lots of uh, roasty, caramely goodness. And Scheiner is actually made in Texas, a German beer made in Texas. So check out Scheinerbach. I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, uh, hike through memory lane. And I'll leave you with this parting thought or question. Um, and it's been on my mind and in the mind of other rock and rollers. What, what's gonna happen when the bands that are left today you know, retire and just fade away. Who's who's going to replace them? Who's the next Springsteen? Who's the next Van Halen? I don't really see it, and uh, it's kind of worrisome for me and other rock fans. But hopefully, the those uh, that we have with us today will endure as long as they can physically do it. So that's all I have for you today at the Little Wall. I'm going to leave you with what Harold S. Smith, Sr. of Harold's Club, always said. I'm with you. Cheers. Stealing bombs